Hey YouTube, welcome to my shop. I'm Mike Hedden and I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, when I started doing these videos, uh, it was the main reason is so my dad living far away could see what his son was up to. I didn't think anybody else would look at it and there's been quite a few people that stops by my shop and one of my uh, friends uh, commented uh, you know in your video do you know that you uh, you can see those pictures of those naked girls in the background and you know I actually to tell you the truth I I forgot all about them uh, and if it offended anybody I apologize but in my shop, there's three things. There's the, the things I use, the things that I use and have a story, and then there's things that I don't use and don't have a story. I just like it. It's like this old number, uh, the 78 here, or I mean uh, the Stanley 45. Um, I just thought it was a, a unique tool, you know, I've loved hand tools since I was in seventh grade word shop and I just thought this was, you know, for 1920, this must have looked space age. It came out with, I bought it with like 15 blades and it comes with dozens more. Will I ever use this on a serious piece of work? I doubt it. I might have fun with it occasionally, but if I'm going to put a dado in a real expensive piece of maple or oak, I, I, I don't think I'm going to use this. Now that might send quivers up and down Roy Underhill's Hill's, uh, skin or S Christopher Swartz, and, and, and I can understand that, you know, it's always better that way, but, you know, as I say, this I don't really use and there's no story on it. Other things, there is stories. Like I don't know if you can see that little doll up yonder. Probably in 1985, I was building a quarter scale extra 230 remote control airplane, and uh, I went into my daughter's room and scrounged that. I thought she may fit in it, but she just it, she was just too small for it. So I put her on the shelf. What 30 years ago? and she still remains so she's kind of got a place in my shop uh these little bears uh it's a friend and when i was a freshman in high school his family went to yosemite on vacation he brought them back to me and uh they went in my hobby box which my hobby box eventually went into my garage box so um i've always kept it the man's since passed away he died a very young man so I keep him out there and I think about an old friend occasionally another thing uh, is uh, maybe this old egg beater uh, this this is my grandfather well no, actually not my grandfather's this is my mother number two's father Mr. Garrison when he passed away Mrs. Garrison's said I'd go in the she, uh, garage and grab anything I wanted and uh, she was a little surprised when I walked out with this. But I was into automobiles. He didn't have really any automobiles uh, uh, tools. So I was always, as I say, I love hand planes or old, old uh, hand tools like this right here. This is another thing in my shop. I found it for like two bucks. I thought it was old. I got it home and cleaned it up. I didn't even know what it was. I found out that it's a saw set and it's made by a company by S Stillman. Yes, yeah, Stillman. And uh, it was patented. It's got a patent mark stamped in it in 1848, 12 years before the Civil War. So it's got a little place in my shop. You know, so as I say, everything has a story. Like this glove. This glove has a story. When I was just going into Little League. I must have been 10 years old or 11 or something. Um, my dad took me down to Fresno and bought this glove for me. And this, at the time, was the best glove you could get. It cost 15 bucks. And my mother had a fit. 
I mean, she was fuming at the ears. Why did you? You know, I, I think my dad at the time made like five bucks an hour. He worked for something. He was a lineman for Edison Company making five bucks an hour. So, um, why again? And he says, well, uh, sweetheart, don't, take it easy. Uh, you, you know, this will last him through high school. And she goes, high school, my foot. He'll lose that sucker before the end of this summer. Well, I think my mother owes me apology. It lasted me through high school, so. It's got a story. Well, this glove's got a lot of stories. Actually, this baseball uh, is part of it. I, I threw a no-hitter in, in Little League. Only time I ever made the paper. So that was the last ball I threw, so I kept it. Nobody knows it. It's just a crummy little baseball. But it's got a story to me, and that's why it's in the shop. So, getting on to these pictures of these pretty ladies. When I was working at, at a company, now this is back before everything was politically correct, we gave out calendars every year with pretty ladies like this on it. You know, it was men calling on men, selling to men. And I don't mind saying I learned that sex sells because those calendars everybody loved the crews loved them i mean they'd call up in november hey mike you got uh you got those calendars for next year yet you know, pile about this high so i'd say well yeah i got a few but i'm really taking them out to uh the you know the people that i do the jobs uh for and i, I was just going to see what i had left oh uh, yeah i got some uh i got some oil to pick up why don't you come out and get it tuesday Oh, okay. Do you, can you spare a second one? Well, Jim, uh, since you're such a good customer, heck yeah, I'll give you. And I mean, these ca these calendars really sold. Now, I, I, I guess male firemen sell to the ladies, too. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not into that. But, uh, we, I, you know, I, we were out here, a friend of mine, we were out in the garage one Saturday morning rebuilding the 304, putting the Edelbrock uh, performer package on it. and um, He's flipping through this calendar, the, the, the latest calendar. And he looks at this one, he says, man. And he slides the calendar right up there. He says, if it was my shop, it would, let's see. If it was my shop, it would always be June 2001. That woman would make a good man go bad. And he kind of laughed when I looked up, looked at her and said, uh, it could take a heck of a lot less than that to make a good man go bad. But anyway, he stuck it up there. And, and since then, that, that man has passed away. And, and uh, so I keep that calendar there just uh, I really don't see it that much but if I do see it I, uh, I I think of an old friend and then the other one let me show you if I can there's a story to that one I want... okay there's a kind of a close-up picture of this lady I, I don't want to embarrass her or anybody watching but I just want to give you a, a, a close-up of what this woman looked like so now you see what this uh, this picture is, it was a woman off of a calendar similar to the one in 2001, but this calendar was 1957. So anyway, in a, this was probably about 30 years ago too, 1985 or so. I was, uh, I was dating this woman and uh, I was heavy into cars, so we were over at a car show. And across the way, I mean, across the way, I just kind of stop and I look at that picture. And it reminded me so much of something that happened 15 years prior when I was 19 years old and, you know, 1970 or so. And I look at that picture and I start walking over there and she says, well, what are you looking at? And I, I said, I, I got to buy this picture. And she looks at that picture. She says, well, how, how am I supposed to take this? Are, are you a deviant, a, a pervert, or a horned dog, or what? <laughs> I, 
I said, what do you want me to be? You know, but, and it didn't go over very well. But I told her the story. So after I told her the story, she seemed to understand a, a little more, but it was funny because uh, she said, well, why do you have to buy that, that picture? And I said, well, because she's old fashioned. She looks at me and she says, does a beautiful woman ever go out of fashion with a man? I go, exactly. And that's why I gotta buy this picture. And um, back when I was 19, I was working summer job at uh, uh, Edison. I was a mechanic. That's another reason why I kind of went from seventh grade wood shop to 10th grade wood shop to 11th grade automobiles. I mean, I being a mechanic at Edison really taught me a lot and gave my love for cars, believe me. So uh, anyway, the, the, there was a crew of three. There was a foreman and there was two mechanics. And uh, now the mechanics were like 30 years old, which to me was old. And then the, the foreman, he was like 40. He was like my dad's age. You know, I mean, what would he know? He, you know, if he's like my dad, uh, you know, he'd get up in the morning, go to work, come on home, work in the garden, watch TV, go to bed the next day, do the exact same thing. I mean, at 19, you know, these 40-year-olds had no clue to life. And on, in the foreman's office, which was kind of like the break room too, there was a table and a, a sofa and stuff. Well, on the, the wall, was that picture uh, on, on a 1957 uh, calendar. So I'm in there and these guys are kind of giving me a hard time, you know, thinking I'm 19, I've, I've never, can you handle that, you know? They, I was trying to tell them, hey boys, this is uh, the 60s. This is uh, love ends flower on your face, free love, y y you know, uh, God, that was wonderful. What was your name again? Uh, uh, never mind, let's go up to the film where I think Janis Joplin's playing. S so these guys were trying to give me a hard time and I thought they were old codgers that didn't know squat. And the foreman said, well tell me what you think of, uh, uh, of her. And I looked at her and I, you know, I was used to the sixth share, you know, very thin bell bottoms, you know. Uh, hu uh, hip huggers that are skin tight down to the knees that go out to a 22 inch bell and a crop top where the your flat belly shows and hair parted down the middle and goes down to her butt. That's what I was, you know, that bubble blonde was n not what I was used to and I I looked at her and I, I said, well, she sure is old fashioned. And there was a silence in there. And uh, the, uh, the foreman looked at H.J. Lake and said, Hey, H.J., do me a favor. If a woman, a beautiful woman, ever goes old-fashioned, if I say she's old-fashioned, would you shoot me, please? <laughs> and everybody laughed, and I, I, I really didn't, you know, I was 19-year-old thinking I knew everything, and I didn't know a thing. So 15 years later, I knew a little more. And when I saw that picture, it just brought it back. So ever since, that picture's been up there. My, my gr uh, grandson came in one time. Grandpa, you've got a picture, a naughty picture of women in your garage. <laughs> and I said, son, you know, I've been, I've been out on the ocean on a clear winter night and the stars are so bright and twinkly up, uh, straight up, and they're the same way right at the horizon on an ocean. And it was like a dome of beautiful stars. It just was flat all the way around, and it was just beautiful. And I'd spent many weeks in the Sierras uh, backpacking, where on the right-hand side you look at magnificent, glorious uh, granite spires and peaks that make you feel insignificant and then you look down 2,000 or more feet to a beautiful green valley that that's just so beautiful 
you know, God has to summer there. But of all the things I've seen in my life, still, I think God's best work is is the woman. And, uh, you know, every time I, I look at those, I think of how arrogant I was with one, and, and uh, I think of a friend on the other. But... Uh, you know, some may think of me as a dirty old man or a pervert. I just say, if I see the ladies and not the story, I think of them as God's beautiful art. And, uh, you know, sometimes God's beautiful art, you know, it, it shimmies up there to, to a masterpiece. So that's the story on my girls, and they're going to stay in my shop, and I hope I don't offend anybody. And if I did... Uh, well, it, it was truly nice knowing you, and I, I wish you well. And for those of you that have a masterpiece, whether it be f male or female, um, consider yourself lucky. It's God's finest work.